I'm in a your last game. I'm professional. I'm professional. I want you to crash in like three seconds. <laughs> Ooh, there's a tree. And we're done. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, and... Whoa! Recovered. That's not realistic. <laughs> X, you can start sprinting. There you go. Run. I see the jet. You think I'm gonna make it in time? Hey everybody, my name's Adam. I'm Sean. And we're flight instructors at the university here. I fly airplanes. I fly helicopters. And uh, today we're gonna be playing some Grand Theft Auto and some Battlefield to see how it actually is uh, as real pilots versus what the video games have in store for us. San Andreas Tower, uh, Vision Jet requesting takeoff, runway one, two, right. How's it doing? Uh, a little touchy, a little sensitive. Also, there's no autopilot, not really used to that. <laughs> you actually have to fly it, huh? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, yeah, flight instruments look like they're working. Yeah. Uh, I can't really tell how there, high though. I am. Yeah, you're not very high. All right, so I'm using my ailerons here to roll the aircraft right now. What is an aileron? An aileron's the thing yeah, on the outside of the wing, and it's gonna increase or decrease the angle of attack, producing more or less lift. So in essence, we're just rolling the aircraft and that's how we can do those barrel rolls. This is actually uh, modeled after, it looks like a vision jet, which is quite convenient because we fly Cirruses here at the university. Um, let's see here, it's got a V-tail, which is unique. But right here, these are elevators. You pitch the plane up and down. That's fairly accurate. Doesn't that V-tail also do elevator and rudder control? It does do rudder control as well. So if I hit these buttons right here, that's my rudder. And that V-tail is, is doing that movement as well. Yeah, I found it interesting how easy it was to get into the airport. I just drove up, my car was wrecked, and they no, just let me in. No That's ID. a little odd. Yeah, no ID, no nothing. Don't pull out the Uzi. This is a family-friendly video. So yeah, this one hey, looks like out, a, for the tail rotor. a little MD variant. Go ahead and jump in, throw on our helmet. Those are missiles on the side. Yeah, it's a rocket pod for sure. Does this thing actually have five rotor blades? Uh, yes. Does. does that make it like really smooth or? It makes it more responsive. Mm -hmm. So typically whenever you have something that's more responsive, it's actually less smooth. Another fun fact, I was trying to do barrel rolls and flips. It also won't let you. Oh, wow. So maybe the video game knows a little bit about actual real they, flying They don't mechanics. have a BO 105, huh? Yeah, but they don't have They don't have the animal? No, sir. The left joystick is going to be your pitch, so you can pitch up and down with that. And then you have yaw control with your R1 and your L1. You can yaw right and yaw left. All right, we'll text you over here to this uh, hangar, and then just like we do here at school, we'll go ahead and jump out, deploy parachute, hopefully we got one. Yeah, don't worry like about the cost of that <laughs> aircraft. We'll get that back. I like our maintenance parachutes. program is awesome here. Oh, how similar is this to our flying? Yeah, not, not very similar at all. Yeah, watch out for those cranes. This Watch why, out, just fly right towards this it. This is why we don't fly under bridges. Totally. You blow yeah. up the bridge. That's <laughs> what we call fixate. If you're looking at it, you're going to go right towards it. Exactly, exactly. Uh, long line is an external load from the helicopter. So either you can have a, a Bambi bucket or a hook at the bottom of it transporting AC units to the top of buildings or Bambi buckets to help put out fires. Uh, something like that. Anything that's externally to the helicopter that you're transporting. Uh, we actually get some of that training here at SUU. Uh, in your commercial lab, you'll get 10 hours, and if you take the external lab, uh, you get an extra couple hours of turbine time and, and long line time. Uh, it looks semi-accurate to me. It's kind of short. Most of the time we practice long line, we're doing 50 or 100 foot lines just to make it a little bit more difficult or a little more accurate to real world. Uh, this one would probably be similar to like a, a belly bucket style. It's uh, just tucked underneath the, the fuselage of the aircraft. It looks like a Chinook variant, um, maybe a little bit older style. I'm on the airport Just environment. pick up some unsuspecting can I pick person up planes? driving. I don't think you can pick up a plane. It'd be pretty cool. I don't know what the uh, max lifting capacity is of this aircraft. So this thing doesn't have a tail rotor because the, the blades are rotating opposite each other, so it doesn't have any the torque. Correct. Correct. Yeah, the, the torque effect is canceled. Yes, sir. When you have an engine that's inside the, the helicopter, um, the torque effect is going to be the power provided up to the main rotor. Since that main rotor is spinning, the fuselage or the body of that helicopter is going to want to rotate in the opposite direction. Um, so you typically have a, a tail rotor that's providing anti-torque uh, on the back end of that, that helicopter. You can usually see them on the back side of the tail. So uh, if the fuselage wants to go to the right, uh, that torque effect is going to be anti-torque to the, the opposite direction to make you stay nice and straight. 
Um, but with the dual rotors like that, you just spin them in opposite directions and it cancels out that torque. You're seeming to have a, a difficult time trying to pick up that car. How do you pick it up? Is someone gonna hop out and hook it up see. for me? I don't understand. I'm hovering like a champ over here and I can't, I can't pick need. them up. Let's uh, watch that telephone pole. Well, it's probably not super accurate. Uh, we wouldn't be this slow. We're definitely gonna be at least 100, or sorry, 500 feet off the ground. Um, but if you wanted to, you could probably do it at least once. Uh, running into all these overpass signs isn't super <laughs> accurate, and there's on the ground again. You're hitting way more stuff than me. Yeah, I'm gonna come back up and pop over top of this guy. There we go, I got you a car. Oh, you picked it up? Yeah, picked it up. Is there someone in this car? Uh, hopefully not, but they might be screaming. We'll find out when we get the audio. Uh, you just go ahead and press this button right here. That's probably where you want to drop them, so right about there. Oh, just put okay. them on the top gotcha. of the roof. Gotcha, gotcha. There you go. They'll be fine. It wasn't that far of a, a fall. Perfect landing. Wonderful, and you're A-OK, -okay, so. Good emergency landing. Uh, you don't have body armor, so I'm gonna predict you last about 10 seconds when you drop into this base. Am I over it? Oh yeah, you're close. I would recommend jumping here and parachuting down. Nice. All right, how do I launch parachute? Uh, X. The jet should be off to your left. Am I getting close? Yep, to your left a little bit more. The hangar's over there, right there. That first one's got one in it. Good luck. A little bit to your right. That one's empty. And if you go. mash X, you can start sprinting. There you go. <laughs> Run. I see the jet. You think I'm going to make it in time? Maybe. And I would recommend taking off from this hangar. Right here? You yeah, think this thing has a power sure. for it? Absolutely. Yep, just kick it open. You don't have the key. Oh, look at you. You got it. Let's go. Rotate. That's your V1. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nice, and you got shot down. <laughs> there's one missile smoking a little bit. You probably still fly with that though. And there's the other. No, <laughs> I got shot down. <laughs> so don't steal jets from military bases, guys. Lesson learned, yeah. lesson learned. Uh, it, gets the, it gets the thumbs down from the pilots. Uh, the helicopters, I mean, I was hovering like a champ in about 13 <laughs> seconds. So I'm gonna go with a, uh, maybe a two out of 10 on the realism, but it was pretty fun. It was quite fun to do. I mean, I was taking off those jets in about 27 feet, so I don't know about that, but it was quite fun. I would say uh, in the instance that it's super realistic that if you do the wrong thing or mess up, you're not going to have a good day. Uh, you're going to end that flight early for sure, so in that instance, it's very realistic. Yeah, I combusted a few times, so definitely, definitely real there. <laughs> uh, next one we're loading up is Battlefield 2042. Uh, we're going to spawn into a solo or a co-op mode. Uh, Adam here is going to try to hover some helicopters and fly around. It's a little bit more difficult flying in this game, uh, so we'll see what he thinks. It's like the setting of this one, 2042. I, yeah, I assume so. Yeah, mm -hmm. Something like that. Fair enough. Yeah. Dude. I hope it's different I'm than your last game. I'm a professional. I want you to crash in like three seconds. <laughs> Just full power full forward. Hardest uh, part's already over. Dude. It's the same. Ah, uh, you're professional. That sucks. <laughs> All right, let's see it. Let's try and fly under some of these cranes then. Okie doke. Uh, so talk about some of the controls you're doing right now. What's different about this All one? All right, so I kind of uh, like this one a little bit better because what I'm doing here is I'm lifting the cyclic forward, backwards, or pushing, I should say. Yep. And then the collective's coming up or down with my left joystick. So I kind of like that. Correct. So the, the collective is going to be on your left hand. It's going to collectively pitch up both blades at the same time. Uh, so typically when you're trying to climb or add power, you pull collective uh, and it pitches both or multiple blades uh, at the same time to give you that lift. Uh, your cyclic is also going to pitch you uh, at different points in the rotation, but it's going to provide directional thrust uh, while you're in the helicopter to fly around. Yeah, I would say the, the similarity uh, between the video game and flying the, the real helicopters, there's obviously a learning curve. Um, depending on the game, it's going to be easier or harder. Uh, but you definitely have to, to learn how to fly the aircraft well, whether it's game or, or life. So, learning curves for sure. So, using a professional flight simulator, they're going to be signed off so that you can actually log some of that time, uh, depending what that certification has on there, what you actually can log. Uh, if you're just at home flying flight simulators, most likely you're not logging that time. I don't know if Adam does, um, but you probably shouldn't be logging that time. The fact that I'm using this to control the helicopter right now, and the fact that I can go like this and hover and not crash is, is a little funny. Um, That's because the you... autopilot's on. You should be used to that. Ah, you're right. I got yeah. the frictions on. Is that oh, what you, you guys the have? Frictions. Yeah. They should give me my commercial certificate in the helicopter. This is too easy. Yeah. Make sure you're logging this time. Oh, naturally. Yeah. 
I didn't get as far endorsed though, so I need to. I still need to That's get all right. It's not a Robbie. It's a, it's a little <laughs> bird. There you go. There you go. Three. What can this thing do? A loop to loop? I think they can. I don't know. There you go. There you go. Oh, and whoa. Recovered. That's not realistic. Recovered. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry though, he's still flying, still guys. Good. Everything's All right, how about okay. this? I get some more altitude. All right, you gotta, you gotta hop in the airplane. I gotta see some of this. Uh, I was I'll killing it in that helicopter. Be honest, I'm not very good at this. All right, here we go. A little F-35 action. I don't think this is as maneuverable as that. that. Oop, there's a tree. And we're done. <laughs> don't hit trees when you're flying around. I don't know, I think that F-35 could've chopped that tree down. Right, that was like a palm tree. Let me try one more time. I think we gotta wait. We gotta wait a minute for that to spawn back. Maintenance has got bad. it in the shop. Uh, uh, the turnaround is a I minute see. and six seconds. So. I see. In normal aircraft, like what we fly, we fly Bonanzas, Cirruses, um, we got some Satabrias and some Barons. But yeah, our primary tra training aircraft is the Cirrus SR20. And that's not doing any barrel rolls anytime soon. Not only is that not good, but if you bank the airplane more than 60 degrees, um, you actually have to do a wing spar inspection. Oh, man, I'm loving this little bird. I see why it's one of your favorites, man. This thing's awesome. Yeah. Look at this. It's, it's a lot of fun flying around the game for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting uh, on the PlayStation here, I gotta look down at what buttons I'm hitting and figure out what buttons I'm hitting on the plane. It's, you, you know where everything is and you don't have to look at it. I like Battlefield a lot. That was a, uh, I felt uh, pretty proficient in the little bird, let me tell you. But yeah, blowing up, uh, still real. Um, we hit a couple uh, cranes and uh, exploded Trees. and yeah, firebombed that. Trees were a big killer for those jets, so. For sure. Lesson learned, don't fly too low, but I'd say that was slightly more realistic. I like the, I like the responsiveness of the controls. I feel more controllable. And um, I could really feel that loss of altitude when I started uh, taking that helicopter around. So I found for it sure. quite interesting. Yeah, I agree. Uh, 2042 is much more realistic than Grand Theft Auto. Um, I just wish it had some some type of anti-torque or rudder control. Uh, um, it doesn't have that in, in 2042, so if they put that in, it would be much better in my, my opinion. Uh, so the next thing we pulled up was the Crew 2. Um, we have one helicopter in this and then a couple different airplanes. Uh, so we'll see, see how it's like flying this one. We're flying around in a Pilatus PC-21. There you go. Your controls, sir. All right, I'm liking uh, this. My controls, your controls. My controls, you my got controls. Them. There we go. And this attitude indicator is super responsive. Well, oh, I can look behind me. Look at that. There you go. Woo. Nice. This is definitely the most realistic when it comes to the airplane, that's for sure. Yeah. You get, it just feels like I'm, the vibrations, what's happening as I'm increasing my airspeed, just the feel of the airplane in general. Kind of what happens to my speed as I pitch up and down, I can really see the reaction to those forces of flight. You can just feel it. That uh, screen on that bottom left almost looks identical to your, your G1000 display. Yeah, no, it looks like the multifunction flight display. So yeah, in our airplane on the left, I mean, it looks very much like an iPad display, but on the left side we have a primary flight display which includes all of our basic flight instruments. So all the, the six-pack instruments are gonna be on there. And then on the right side we have our multifunction flight display and the multifunction display is going to have things like our engine instrumentation, which I'm looking at right here. It looks like on the right screen down there. And uh, we also have our moving map, so we can kind of see where we're going. Woo! See if you can land on that road beneath you. That was aggressive. <laughs> Gear out, that's uh, pretty important yeah, how do too. I, uh, does it come out automatically? I think it does when you get low to the ground. So right now this is very interesting. I'm at super low airspeed. And because I'm at that super low airspeed, my controls weren't really responding. Yeah, That's because like a, yeah, that is really interesting. With a lack of airspeed and a lack of uh, airflow over those control surfaces, like my ailerons, elevator, and rudder, they're not really going to respond near as much. Yeah, I was quite surprised when I first started playing this game at um, how accurate that yeah. was. It doesn't really give you as much authority when you start slowing down. Yeah, the authority of my elevator right now is really slow as I'm flying. All right, so yeah, you always do a barrel roll when you're coming in for your landing spot. It helps Absolutely. you kind of get a better sight picture of it. Of course, you're of course. Inverted. Based off the effectiveness at this low of an airspeed, I'm gonna say we're below our approach speed. Okay. Looks oh, like I, you're about my rudder. Sixty oh. miles an hour right now. All right, coming in. So we had a crosswind there, so I touched the left wheel first and then the right wheel. Nice. You gotta watch out for pedestrians. That guy, we don't want to chop him up in the prop. For sure, yeah. He doesn't have his ID on him. You can tell if there's a crosswind. No, he's making stuff oh, up. I was gonna say, what? <laughs> hey, don't tell him. He's making excuses. There's a bite <laughs> hey, on the hey, left hey, wheel. Hey, don't worry about it. 
This looks like some type of Eurocopter. Um, I don't know the exact variant of it. Okay, and I like it. Once again, oh. pretty realistic inside. How do I go up? Uh, one of the joysticks aft. There you go. And then like power is right. Yep. I see. Yeah, I think it's similar to the Battlefield 2042 controls. You should have power. Uh, collective inputs on one of the joysticks and then your pitch uh, cyclic input on the other. Uh, in the crew too, you have a much better picture of what's going on inside the cockpit. Um, and some of the other ones, they try to give you that kind of view. Obviously GTA 5 is a little bit older of a game, so you get more detail uh, with this, the crew too. Um, but to be honest, the, the control inputs of what you're seeing are pretty realistic to what the, the pilot would be doing. Um, obviously, you don't know if this is a clockwise rotating or a counterclockwise rotating uh, main rotor. Um, so those pedal inputs could be accurate, they could not be accurate. Um, but at least they, they show some type of movement to give you that feel of, of what you're actually controlling. Max performance takeoff. There you go. Beautiful. Ooh, probably lift my head up. I was looking at the ground right uh, now. I think scary. actually, oh, maybe not. There you go. Oh, okay, I see. Nice. So it turns out we're flying the animal right now. I just successfully nice completed a barrel roll. Well done, well done. And you wouldn't want to come to an OG hover like this. Uh, Obviously, you have the performance. We got the power, board. right? Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Uh, but just in case something happens, most uh, helicopters have something they call the height velocity diagram. Uh, and if you're in that zone, um, probably not a good place to be. It's where a average pilot uh, can successfully recover that aircraft in the event of a power failure. So, I mean, from what I see, you're you're slightly above average. I would agree. Yep. Yeah, wholeheartedly. And I'm sure you're hitting it right now. Oh. There we go. A nice smooth landing. It's exactly how you want to fly, just like in San Andreas, 90 degree banks. Okay, this looks like sideways. LAX, huh? There you go. How, how powerful are these skids? <laughs> Not that powerful. So how do you propose you're going to land inside that fenced area uh, with that, that tail boom right there? No, so I'm just going to scoot far forward and I'm going to go with the angle. Watch Oh, ooh. Okay, so just throw that main rotor into the tower. Yep. Okay. No, that's far enough, don't worry. It's right. cleared. It's Let's cleared. see it. Like a glove. I think you're still on that fence. There you go, sitting on the fence, and now you're going backwards. There you go. Boom. Look at that. That rail is at the appropriate height for those main rotors just to oh, yeah, we're clear. skim yeah, across the top of it. All right, now watch this. Let's see it. Textbook. Textbook. Yeah. Textbook. Nice flare. Watch that tail. Oh, we're going to level some pull. Yeah, another 26 points, a uh, hard landing we just had. So we just got done playing the Crew 2. Uh, we flew a Pilatus PC-21 uh, in a helicopter that looked like some version of a Eurocopter. Um, pretty realistic. Uh, like Adam said, we were kind of fighting the controls on the, the helicopter. It almost seems like it was inhibiting you uh, and making certain inputs. Uh, the PC-21, super accurate. Like Adam said, when you slow down a little bit, um, the less air moving over those controlling surfaces gave you less authority. So in my instance, uh, I think it was pretty accurate for the flight controls. Yeah. I liked in the helicopter that when I kept crashing into overpasses and trees and stuff, I didn't blow up. Yeah. That was uh, my favorite part of this game for sure. But yeah, Sean hit the nail on the head there. This was a, this was a good one. So yeah, Grand Theft Auto is definitely last place, the least realistic. Makes sense, it's the oldest game. Um, but I want to go with uh, I want to go with the crew as the most realistic. It. Uh, I really like flying that PC-21. I mean, as I slowed down, I really could feel the planes kind of uh, snappiness go away as we have less airflow over those control surfaces. So yeah, definitely, uh, I'd say the crew's in uh, first place. That takes number one. Yeah, I would also agree. The crew two, definitely the most realistic. Uh, Battlefield 2042, probably a really close second, um, just because it's it's a little bit more difficult to fly the helicopter. Um, the crew too, it's a little bit easier. Like I said, it almost seems like it's restricting you and making certain control inputs, but uh, flying the airplanes for sure, crew two uh, takes the cake on that one. Hey everybody, that's gonna be it for today's video. We played the crew, Battlefield, and Grand Theft Auto. Hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, let us know in the comments. Go ahead, subscribe, like, and uh, let us know who flew a little bit better. And remember, never quit, never give up, fly it to the end.